Welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, we're going to be getting a bound system as well as fixing some minor things and just improving the system overall. This will probably be the second or third last video, depending on how the next video goes. But without further ado, this will be a shorter video because I'm doing it last minute again because I don't have time. But I got to get the video out. So let's just get right into the video. No advertisements on this one. So the first thing we are going to do is work on the bound system. And that's something that's the most important right now because if you test, obviously the object can go off of the plot. Actually, just to fix, uh, temporarily fix uh, one of the bugs so that when you have your mouse going into well, essentially just the void of space, it will error. We want to fix that. It, this isn't going to be a permanent fix. We're actually going to uh, completely be fixing that shortly after but for now we are just going to rescale a part by just duplicating the base plate that we are using just like this so then we can do this by the way if you press control you can extend both sides at the same rate uh, and if you press shift while dragging it'll scale it up on all as you can see even on the Y it's moving up so I think that is good. I'm also actually just going to move it over just a bit, and that looks good. Uh, then we have to rename it. So I'm just going to call this T because whatever. Just it has to be anything other than base since our script over here uh, is using workspace.base. So it'll it could pick this part. Okay. So now, as you can see, we will be able to test our placement system. Grid will come up. But as you can see, we are able to place over here. If we had a placement system involved where it sends it to the server, this would actually work. So we don't, we don't want that. OK, so to fix that, we can just create a function probably up just right below handle collisions and above calculate y position. And we are just going to call this function bounds. This is going to take a few parameters. The first one is obviously going to be the current C frame that we're using. So we're just going to do CF for that. And we're also going to take in the offset variables. So offset X and then offset Z. Okay, so now we can just obviously start creating this function. Okay, so next we are just going to create a variable called local lower X bound. We're also going to do the same for lower z bound. We'll fill these in after, although we're just declaring them for now. Then we're also going to do the same thing for the upper variables. So we can just copy and paste these and replace the lower with upper. And now we have our variables. So these are going to correspond to the bottom or the lower and upper corners on each axis of the plot. So we're obviously for this, so I'm going to color it a different color here. Maybe I'll just make it white for demonstration purposes. So our lower X bound would be here, and or I guess it would be more here. And then using with the Z would also then be here because the center is right here, and then we'd pop it over and move it down. Um, I explained this sort of concept like getting you know, the size is using, you know, half the size and all that in the previous video when we did stacking objects, but it's the same concept here. So to get the corner, we just subtract half the size and then half the, uh, for each axis. And then for the, it's the opposite for the upper, we just add half the size. So let's go do that. Okay, so we are just going to say that lower X bound is equal to plot dot position dot x subtract and then this is where we do our subtracting half the size so we can have plot dot size okay caps lock was on for a second dot x times 0.5 or the same thing is divided by 2 uh, the reason why i'm doing that is it's a micro optimization at least as far as i'm aware i'm not sure if lou will you update some um, have fixed this but as far as i know this is it Correct me if I'm wrong. And then we just add on our offset x. So that's all we do. And then for it's the same exact thing for the upper x bound, except we change a few things. Um, so we can just copy this line. 
but instead of it being lower x, it's going to be upper x bound. And so instead of subtracting the half the height, we are just going to add. Now, similarly, uh, but sort of maybe contradicting a little bit of what you may think, we actually subtract our offset. Uh, so we basically do the opposite. And this is just how we're going to do it. So we're just going to copy this. Then we can say lower, instead of x, we replace that. Same over here. And then the same over here. And whoops, the same over here. OK, so again, what this is doing is essentially just getting the lower uh, x bound. So the lower x bound uh, would be this point approximately right here. The upper would be over here. And for the z, lower and upper bound. And then combining the two, you get each corner. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. So then we actually have to create the C frame that we're going to return from this function. So to do that, all we do is we create two variables, one for new x, and then one, whoops, one for new z. And then we can either just create a variable for new C frame, or we could just return that. In fact, I think I'm just going to return a C frame dot new, and then we can do new x. We're not going to do anything with, uh, actually, no, we do have to do something with this. We do pos y. I believe that is what we are doing down here. Yeah, pos y. And then same thing over here for that axis. OK, so to fill these two variables in, we're just going to be using the clamp function. So I'm actually just going to go up here for easy access next time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called clamp. And this is just going to store the math.clamp function. And actually, I just realized we can actually remove the C frame here and just do uh, C frame. So what are we going to do? Well, I actually want you to try and figure this out on your own. Of course, I'm going to give the answer anyway, but just to have some thinking, just try and do it. If you can't, that's that's fine. But just try and see if you can do it. If you can't, then I'll explain it in a minute. All right, so I'm assuming you went and tried to do that. Um, but it's actually not that hard. Um, it's OK if you didn't get it, obviously. But the solution is just to use the clamp function, which if you didn't know, just clamps a value from one value from a minimum and maximum value. So we have to give it our the value we want to clamp. So we want to clamp cf.x. So this is our original C frame. And then we're going to clamp it between the lower x bound and the upper x bound. And we'll do the same for the z as well. So all we simply do is just say lower x bound, upper x bound. That's it. And we can just copy this line. So equals clamp. And instead of it being x, we just replace like that. And this should work. Now, of course, we do need to actually return this. So we're going to need to, or we're, we're going to need to set this to our new position down here. And so the easiest way to do that is we can just call bounds when we set our C frame up here. So we just do this and then we add our offsets in offset X and then offset Z just like that. And that should actually work. So let's hit play and see if it does work. Oh, I forgot to change the texture. But as you can see, we are snapping. Now, we are also going to be fixing this kind of thing as well, where if you're not on the plot or whatever, it'll still move down. But as you can see, it the, what we're worried about is the bounds function working, and it does seem to be working. And just to make sure, let's actually go and rescale our object. Let's bring this out. Let's get the hit box, and we'll use the scale tool scale it up to 12. Put it back in items. And I'm actually just going to, whoops, whatever. We'll just do that. OK, here we go. And as you can see, everything. Oh, right, I forgot to do one more thing. So the reason why it wasn't actually snapping is because 
this variable up here, where is it? Rotation val is set to false initially. So we can either default this at true, or we can just, whenever we start a new placement, we can just default it at true. Because if you look, if our rotation val is true, then we're gonna do this, which is offset x equals the primary part uh, x size. So if it's unrotated, this is what we should be getting. But instead what we're doing is since we're setting it to false, it's actually assuming we've already rotated. So it's actually doing this line instead and offsetting it with the wrong size. So to fix that, all we do is whenever we activate a placement, we are just going to go and right here, we can just say rotation val equals true. And that should fix the problem. And okay, so as you can see, even if we rotate, it does seem to be working. There we go. All the corners worked. Obviously all the sides worked with all rotations. So yeah, everything seems to be working fine. Now let's go on to those quality of life, I guess, almost things or just fixes in general. So the first thing I want to do is actually add in a way to make default keybinds. So I do this in my placement module, it's really simple. So say the user forgets to input the rotation key. Normally your script would just error and be like, I don't have this value. But one thing that's good about programming languages is they have logical operators. So we can say if this didn't happen, then we can default to something. So it's basically like saying like, if this doesn't exist, then set it to that, but instead it's just all in one line. So let me show you, if you, I, I'll, some of you may, might know how to do this, but if you don't, I'll show you here. So essentially all we can do is we can just say, or, and then default it to the value we want. So enum.keycode.r is what I'm doing for that. And then, or enum.keycode.x is typically what I do, but you can set it to whatever you want. So basically it's saying, if we have a value, then set it to the, whatever the user inputted. Or if there is no value input, then just default to our preset uh, keybinds. That is essentially all we are doing for that. Now, there is one other issue that we need to fix. Well, two other issues, but one is more prevalent. So let's say I delete this. Actually, I want to, what color is this? Ghost gray. Okay. So when we have our mouse into the void, it's actually not, there's gonna, we're getting errors from the stackable objects. And the reason for that is because we don't know, we're checking, we're trying to use the mouse.target, but the target is nil in the void. And so what we need to do is essentially, we just need to check and mouse.target, and that should fix the issue. Just see, seems to be working. This is an issue that will just happen anyway. But yeah, you shouldn't have a problem with this if you have like an actual map or something. But yeah, as soon as your mouse obviously goes onto the plot, oh, I forgot to make these not can collide. We will do that in the next episode. Um, but yeah, okay. So the next thing that we're gonna do is just make sure, let's actually bring back T. And we'll still make this medium stone gray. Uh, we'll make T a different color. So whenever you have your plot on, or your mouse on something lower than the plot, then it's gonna lower as well. So the way to fix this is to check and mouse.target is, and then descendant of, plot or I guess we could just say is plot but we're just going to say is descendant of plot and otherwise it'll just default to the plot size so we don't even need to do that anyway so now as you can see works perfectly fine now we don't need to it doesn't lower onto the new or the t plot size Okay, let's just go over the code like I usually do. So the first thing that I'm gonna go over is just the rotate key thing. So this is basically just saying, pick this, otherwise 
pick this if this doesn't exist. Now keep in mind that one thing to note is that if the rotate key doesn't exist but the terminate key does, that the terminate key that you put in will just be defaulted as the rotate key because the script will not know that you forgot to put input this but but just input that. So you keep that in mind. Next up we have the bounds function which all it does is it just gets the lower corner or the lower x bound I guess. Uh, the lower corner is only when we have the lower z and x combined into a c frame or positioned vector 3 and we just subtract half the plot size to get the lower x bound and then we also add on the offset and we do the reverse for the upper bound similarly with the z coordinates we do the exact same thing except with z and we do the same alternating then we go ahead and clamp those values or we clamp a new x value uh, the c frame between lower x and upper x same with z and then we return that value which gets set down here and then we return that we also fixed a few bugs so just using this here so if the mouse dot target exists meaning what the mouse is pointing on and also to make sure that the thing that the mouse is pointing on is a descendant of the plot and that's all we did so that's basically the video okay so that is basically the video this was probably a bit longer than i was expecting it to be but still not as long as some episodes um so yeah hopefully you did enjoy if you did enjoy make sure you join the discord server link will be in the description and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and like the video and i'll see you in the next video